Welcome to the new Way Things Work, the fully revised and updated product of many years of painstaking scientific research on the part of myself and my colleague, the Woolly Mammoth. Here you will find fascinating revelations about a variety of everyday appliances and the principles that govern their operation, such as those of levers, electricity, and, of course, the wheel. I have also elected to share with the world some of the most original insights furnished by our scrupulous scientific observations, some of which reached a more successful conclusion And that's it? That's all you're giving me? I guess that's it. Good day, class. My name is Professor Adventure, and welcome to the new way things work. DK Multimedia... I don't even know. This is... this is a weird one. This is a weird one. I'm gonna warn you now. We're gonna first enter our name, and you're gonna see what this one is all about. My name is Professor Adventure. I don't know if I said that already, but we're gonna call ourselves the Super Professor. Uh, Professor. The Spare Professor. <laughs> yep, that looks right. Okay, so what do we do? Because I haven't played this game in a long time. Mammoth movie, Mammoth Schoolhouse, Inventors. I guess we go into the digital domain. I guess we go to see what this is all about. I guess we click on the screen on the Mammoth's back. Oh. See, looking at this at first glance, I thought maybe, you know, this was a settings menu. No, 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 my friend. This is all instructions and just tidbits of information. Essentially, it's having an encyclopedia on a CD-ROM of a bunch of new wave futuristic stuff on your CD flapping into your computer. The internet is a global web of computer networks linked together so that they can share information. Millions of people are connected to the internet, though their personal computers, oh, through their personal computers, a computer attached to the internet by a modem. Do you guys remember a modem? Yes. I, actually, there's, there's still a, a relative thing. Can be used to send and receive data through services such as email and the World Wide Web. We have that all here now, but um, so this is this is how this is how it works. This is how it works. So, um, uh, computer network. What's that do? Oh, it explains what a computer network is. Interesting. Service provider. Your Rogers, your Telus, your Virgin Mobile. Internet users are linked to each other by companies with equipment necessary to handle large amounts of data. Telephone cables. Not used so much anymore. Wha Optical fiber. Cool. See, also, what else can we see in this? This is how you get around this thing. So from here, you can also see what's related to the computer. Cool. Personal computer, a desktop personal computer or a PC performs tasks that would have needed to needed a room full of computers 20 years ago. A PC usually consists of a system unit with built-in disk drives, a keyboard for input, and a screen for output. Peripherals such as printers and disk drives make the PC much more versatile by adding further input and output methods and the ability to communicate with other components. So you plug your computer into your modem, you get your internet, get your printer going, get some speakers, and old disk drive and a CD drive floppies virtual display unit 
the also. Okay, so let's go back and then back again. Uh, let's do the Mars Pathfinder because you know that's kind of interesting. Essentially, this is going to be 15 minutes of me rambling on text. So buckle up. The Mars Pathfinder space probe landed on Mars in 1997. After touching down on a cushion of airbags, the lander unfolded three solar panels, which provided it with power for the rest of the stay on Mars. Pathfinder used its camera and other instruments to gather valuable scientific data. It also relayed information between mission control on Earth and the Mars uh, son so so journer that word mini rover vehicle which was used to explore the martian surface and then with this guy oh wait this video watch it land Whee! yay cool ah i don't need to see that again What's in the sea also over here? Radio transmitter, robots, rockets, solar cells. Like, this is a ton of stuff. Okay, so let's um let's go back a little further here. Back to the outside. Mammoth movie. What's a mammoth movie? Yeah. <laughs> One day, while in search of some companionship for my woolly friend, the mammoth and I arrived at an impressive set of gates, where we encountered their guardian, Bill, who informed us that we might find what we sought inside his digital domain. As soon as the mammoth was safely inside Bill's gates, eager assistants began to gather data on every aspect of his considerable being. This data was quickly recorded and then sent for conversion. Using rows of crates and countless pumpkins, the data was translated into patterns. I was interested to observe that the number 237, for example, became pumpkin, 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 no pumpkin, 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 no pumpkin, pumpkin. I have to admit that the complexity of the next pumpkin sorting process was impressive even to an experienced inventor such as myself. Although things would perhaps have become clearer had I not missed its conclusion. As the response to Bill's pumpkin data arrived, I witnessed an extraordinary process by which a stream of fruit could be transposed into a visual representation of information, albeit a slightly sticky one. Bill soon announced that he was ready to unveil what he called his Virtual Mammoth Simulator version 1.0. As the images created from the processed data combined with realistic stereo sound, our friends certainly seemed to be thoroughly immersed in the experience. It appeared that his lonely days as the sole representative of his species might be at an end. At least, until he tried to get a little too interactive. The end. Did you guys learn a thing? Because there's going to be a test. So I hope you study up. Mammoth schoolhouse, I suppose. Hello. Game. Game. Oh, I'm not clicking on it. What is this? Oh. What is this? Digital domain. Is that where I was? Is that where I just was? It's, oh, it takes a little bit to load. Wait, it's not going anywhere. Oh, there we go. So this is the digital one. Okay, so let's go back in here. Let's not be such a, a scaredy cat. And let's check on electricity. Charge blank, accumulate, or move to create electricity. Uh, neutrons. Nope, so I do not know what it is. So I go to research answer. And it takes me to electricity. And it takes me right to where I need to be. So I can move these menus around uh, to where I need it to go. Uh, hold on. Let me, just, let me just get that out of the way for a sec. Uh, electricity is the accumulation or movement of charged particles. All matter, solid, liquid, or gas is made of units called atoms. Ooh. So I click on at at atoms. And I go, bam. Wait, what? 
was still wrong. Charge at what, what? This is where it took me. Um, I'm turn maybe some of which charge. There are two types of electric charges: positive and negative. Forces of these charges are responsible for the effects of electricity can produce. A movement of ch oh oh oh! It's charged particles. Charged particles. What is it? Just particles? Oh, I don't have to put the particle start part. Part part part, please. Is 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 this right? I did it. That's the correct answer. That's awesome. Electricity is a source of what? Is this is this, it? It would be in the same area here, wouldn't it? If I just go research answer, electricity uh, is the most versatile and convenient source of power. Our answer is power hour. Done. We're going to finish this test, guys. I hope you're uh, in for the long haul. What type of electricity collects in one place? Ooh, we got a video. When, when two objects are rubbed together, electrons may move from one to the other. When a plastic comb rubs on cloth, for example, it uh -huh. picks up extra electrons from the cloth, giving it a negative charge. Small pieces of paper normally have no overall charge. When the comb is brought close to the paper, however, the negative charge on the comb pushes electrons away from the atoms in the paper, creating positive ions at the top of each piece of paper. The positive ions and negatively charged comb attract each other, and the pieces of the paper stick to the comb. And you can try it at home. Uh, okay, let's scoot you over here so I can get my question back. Data collects in one place. So, from what we just learned, static electricity. Bam! All right, two more. I didn't realize it was, I was actually going to be quizzed on this. Ah, uh, telephone. Yeah, telephones. That's true. That's not how you spell true, but I, that's true. Everybody knows a little cell phone needs electricity to work. Come on. Here it says an electrical kettle. Name the part which converts electricity into heat. I'd assume it'd be the iron rod, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it's taking me to an electric kettle. Whoa, 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 guys, let's come down. Okay, which part converts electricity into heat? Okay, uh, the heating element inside electrical is the electric energy to heat. So it's just it's just the heating element. Okay, it's a heating element. It's, it's right in the title. It's right there. I did it. I am a master in the principle of electricity. I wish that were so. Oh, there's an actual completion to this game, is there? So I can do all of these, yes? You don't say. Really? Okay, well, let's, let's, let's put you away. Let's go to the warehouse. Step inside. Step inside. Go into the warehouse. We'll see what's in here. Random machine. The solar heater. A solar panel collects infrared radiation from the sun and converts the, come down over there. The energy into heat even on cloudy days. The solar heater can help provide a house with hot water for washing or heating. This cuts down on fuel bills and improves the energy efficiency of the house. Okay, so that's what that what the warehouse does. Is there anything else I need to know about? Machines, maybe? Okay, so that's all alphabetized. Principles, perhaps? Well, that's a lot of stuff. History? Ugh, history. The Industrial Revolution, 1701 to 1850. And inventors. Oh, look at all these. Kill the Jensen... Zwerk, Zwerskin, Volta, Bins, Faraday, uh, Bell, the 
book of inventors, the Wright brothers and Archimedes. Science test. Why does that keep flashing? Oh, that's putting that up there. What's in the options? I just want to take a look at the options here. Uh, index, help, copy, print, print. Mammoth movies. Whoa, there's a lot of mammoth movies to look look at. But uh, look at all this stuff that's in here. What's in the storeroom? Screensavers. Oh, I can get a screensaver. I don't know what the screensaver do. I can get the wheel screensaver, or the magnet screensaver, or the flight, or the spring. I doubt those will work on this because this is just an emulation. I'm just kidding. It's a physical CD, so who knows what it'll do. Can I go back to like the main area, or do I have to just constantly push this back button? Will I get to... Actually, if I go like this, and I go to math school, and I go to digital domain, back to the main area where we started here. The digital domain. Let's go. Let's go. There we go. Back to the beginning. Okay, so I am all out of time for this lesson. Um, I have no idea if this was interesting or not because to me this is just a big nostalgic kick in my head and this was a CD that was sitting on my desk and I thought I'm going to slap that into my CD tray and see what happens. Uh, so this is the new way things work. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see some more stuff and learn some more stuff in this game because this is a fountain of knowledge in here. If this doesn't ban out, then maybe we'll do it later in a live stream or something. But if you guys want to see more, you guys let me don't know no, down in those comments below. You hit those, those big old thumb up buttons and we'll see what we can big old Professor Adventure can do for you. So... With that being said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this very long, drawn-out explanation of stuff. I hope I can make it somewhat entertaining. Be sure to follow me on social media where I post about live streams and other things that I'm going to be doing and what I'm doing currently in my day-to-day -day basis. Um, I hope you guys learned a thing or two because I know I sure did. And it's all gone in one ear and out the other and then kind of rebounded back and forth because I'm wearing headphones. I'm diving way too, too deep into this. I do not know how to end an episode. So until next time, class is dismissed. See you guys later.